Good morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben. I'm glad you're joining us today. I'm glad we're able to be on. Um, the power went out about five minutes ago, and I, I wasn't so sure that the internet was going to reboot in time, um, but the internet got rebooted in time. This was a really heavy snow, so I'm not surprised you could see branches hanging down on the drive-in. Um, that The roads weren't that bad. They were just kind of wet and slushy. Um, subdiv- subdivisions were a little bit worse, so where you live might might have some more accumulated. Um, before we dig in, uh, you know, after Christmas in the church year is kind of uh, a somber, sad Um you have Martyr of Justin Martyr on December 26th. Then uh, yesterday, there's this, the, the Feast of St. John. And today is uh, the Murder of the Holy Innocents. It's just kind of a, a downer time. Uh, about four years ago, what well, was either four or five years ago, I I preached on the calm of the storm for Christmas Eve. I don't know if you remember this. There was all this chaos leading up to Jesus' birth, and immediately after, there was all this chaos, and it was like this huge hurricane is going by, but on Christmas Eve, you're in the eye of the storm. And it, I, I, that, that image sticks with me, because every time you come right out of Christmas, you get, you get martyrdom, you get uh, the murder of the holy innocents. Do you remember what the murder of the holy innocents is? Herod was just so jealous. Everyone's talking about this king. The Magi have come to talk to, to Herod. And so Herod goes, look, I can't have someone overthrowing me. You guys keep talking about a king. Anyone? Un-? And so it's been two years. Jesus is about two years old when the Magi come. And the Magi come and they said that this prophecy came two years. Or they started their travels two years ago. And that's when the baby was born. So Herod murders every child under the age of two that's a boy. Every child. Every boy. It's It's unthinkable. It's unthinkable. Um, so it, it, it'd be worth reading into. And, and it, 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 it definitely is a downer of a topic, but it, it's worth to know kind of some of the history going around uh, the time of Jesus' birth. It was chaotic. We have this peace and this calm on Christmas Eve, but before and after, it is a mess. Um, but sorry to steal a little bit of that f- for what's kind of going on in the church here today. Let's uh, make our beginning this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. Our verse of the day is from Hebrews uh, chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Oh, uh, Hebrews is a great book. We need to dig in and do a Bible study on Hebrews. It's just an excellent, excellent book. While this recalls the earlier encouragement in earlier in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, to, to keep hold of the confession, here we have something similar, hold fast. So keep hold, hold fast uh, to this confession of Jesus as God's son. And then there's this added thing to, it, this is the beauty of reading reading the Bible in context. I encourage you to consider a, a reading plan where you're reading large chunks of the Bible. Um, maybe even uh, read a book in a sitting. Especially the New Testament books, they're shorter and you can do that in one sitting. Um, you know, on a day like this, grab a cup of coffee uh, and and sit around a fire and read one of the books. Because the beauty of, of this is I was able to uh, remember something about my previous times in Hebrews, about how, how the author talks about uh, holding a number of times. And then I went back and found it is that he mentions it again. Um, but this time, he adds something to this holding. He adds to this confession that it's a confession of hope. Now, we, we, we've let the world run roughshod with the word hope. The word hope is often viewed as a wishing well. 
that I, I wish, I, I flick a coin in the wishing well and I wish that this would happen. I hope that this will happen, but I don't know. I'm uncertain. But the confession of faith in Jesus Christ as God's son is one where God has been faithful to promises of past. He's made this promise in the future and we have confidence that it will happen. This is our hope. It's a very different thing than the way the world uses the hope. We have hope and promises of God. Through Jesus, through faith in Jesus Christ, we know that what God has promised before, he always made good on. He's made this promise. He's going to make good on it. And so we, we have this phrase, and it's probably a, a $50 theological word, eschatological Eschatological means end, end times or, or the, the coming of the reign and rule of God in its fullness. And there are eschatological gifts that God provides. Closing of the age gifts. And this is one of the things that the author of Hebrews really wants to emphasize for, for his hearers, but then also for us. He's trying to help Hebrews and Jews see this Jesus is fulfilling all these prophecies about who the Messiah is. And so, this rest, this hope, this comfort in the promises includes, and then he lists them out throughout the entire book. I mean, I, I, could, I, I went and did the research, and there are uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 different references to these eschatological gifts. Ah, and they include eternal salvation, eternal redemption, eternal inheritance, the forgiveness of sins, life with God, healing from God, holiness, and then uh, the arrival of a heavenly Jerusalem. There's so much here. It is amazing. And it's for your comfort and hope for your hope not wishing well hope confidence that god's going to make good on promises there's so much joy in the christian life that even on a day like this the murder of the holy innocents we can look at it and and go god has uh, worked through the murder of the holy innocents to bring about the glory of his kingdom um i, I can't remember who said it it was either Irenaeus or Athanasius or I, it was a church father who said that the blood of martyrs is the seed of the church. When you see people so convicted to die for their faith in hope, that there's a resurrection, man, you're curious. You want to know, you want to hear what this faith was about. And Christians need to, to consider revisiting this. We need to consider a life uh, lived in this confident hope of this confession that he will make good on his promises because God is faithful. Oh. There's, there's joy in there, right? There's excitement, even for a gloomy day, even for a day remembering the murder of the holy innocents. There's hope and joy. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, this confession of our hope is one that we have committed to memory. We hear it time and time again that you make promises and remain faithful to them. Moving from this, instill in us joy of the gospel, joy of the good news that's, that starts in, in Christmas and Advent and moves to Easter and all the way through to when you return. And help us to, with vigor and joy, share this with everyone who will listen. We pray this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. I encourage you today, if you don't already have things like shoveling and raking roofs, but maybe in between all that, when there's a break, to grab a cup of coffee, grab something warm, and read the book of Hebrews. Just sit down and read it. and See the beauty of the promises and the comfort and the hope. Have a wonderful day in Christ. I look forward to seeing you soon.